In this video, we are going to learn about list. As the name implies, it helps us to work with list of values. Now, for example, if I want to store some information about departments in a company. So let me use a variable called as DEPT. And to create a list, we may need to use square bracket. Now, whatever values that we want, we have to place within the square bracket. And now we may need to separate the values with the help of a comma, like this. Now, let me give some information about departments which is present inside the company like HR, Finance, IT and Admin. Now, this is how I store a list of data. Now, if I want to access it or if I want to print the information which is present inside my department, so let me run this code and whatever is there inside will get printed as it is. Now, if I want to access a particular value from a list, I can use something called as indexing. Let me say DEPT and put a zero there. This called this is the zeroth index. Now zeroth index value is HR. Always your list starts with index zero. Now let me execute this code and I'll be getting only HR. Now if I put two, I'll be getting IT. Like this, I can access each and every value with the help of index. Now this is called as indexing. As we have seen in the video of a string on negative indexing, in list also we have something called as negative indexing. Now when I go here and then say minus one, so when I say DEPT of minus one, it takes the last index position. Now it prints admin. So when I say four, it prints HR. This is negative indexing. We have seen positive indexing and negative indexing both. Now, if I want to print some range of values, for example, I want to print finance, IT and admin, or like if I want to say HR and finance, two values. Now, I, I can use a method called as slicing that will give the starting index and colon followed by the end index. Now, when I run this code, it prints HR and finance. Now, when I say zero, this is the zeroth index. And this is the first this is the value of the first index and this is the value of the second index even though i give two here it takes from zero and stops before two it doesn't take the it doesn't go to the end of it right so when i say zero and two it starts from hr finance and stops before two now if i want to start from finance and print everything which is there inside the list i'll just go here and put one and then here I, it is not required for me to put three here when I say one and colon, it means that it starts from one and goes till the end. So let me run this code. It prints you finance, IT and admin. This is one kind of slicing. Okay. Now, apart from indexing and slicing, we have a lot of built-in methods that are available to access data and to store data or modify or delete whatever you want. You can do it with the help of the methods that are available for list. Now we are going to see one by one all the methods. Now I have some four departments here. If I want to add the fifth department, I'll be using a method called as append. And then say, I want to add something. For example, let me add training department. And then let me try to print it. Now here, when I say append method, append method appends the data which is given to the existing list. So when I run this code, I'll be getting HR, finance, IT, admin, and at the last training. As the name implies, append it appends at the last. Now we have one more function called this clear. Now clear method helps to clear the entire content of the list, but it doesn't delete the list. It doesn't delete the list from the uh, uh, memory. It just clears the data, just clears only whatever data is present inside the list that alone will get deleted, that alone get cleared. Now let me run this code. 
So I appended it and I print. So after printing, it's printing everything. And after clearing the data, when I say DEPT, it's printing an empty list. It doesn't take the data entirely. It doesn't uh, remove the department list out of the memory. It will be still there, but as an empty list. Okay. Now, if I want to copy the content of DEPT inside another list, I'll say new DEPT assign DEPT dot copy. Now, this copy method helps me in copying the entire content of DEPT inside a new list called this new DEPT. Now, let me say if I'm going to print and then let me execute it. Yeah, whatever the content of DEPT is getting copied to the new DEPT list. This is about copy method. Now I have one more method called this extend. Let me tell you what that extend does. Let me create a new list called as add DEPT and then let me add training comma transport two new departments right now first let me append it and show you how it works and let me show you if I extend what happens what's the difference between append and extend that is what I'm going to show you now so let me say DEPT dot append now my uh, requirement is I just want to add these two departments training and transport inside the dip already existing department list so when I say DEPT dot append and then say add DEPT when I try to execute this you'll be surprised to see that the training and the transport department transport information whatever is given a list is getting appended as a list itself it is not getting appended as an element inside the list but rather it is getting stored inside the list as a list itself but this is this is not I want what we want is just to add training and transport as a element of the list. So instead of using the append method, let me use the method called as extend. Now if I use this method extend, see the difference. Let me run this code and see. Now this training and transport departments are getting stored. The elements of this add department are getting stored as element of department, not as a list itself. Right. So this is the difference between using a list and a extend. Okay. Hope you understood. Okay. Good. So let me give you one more method that is called as index. I'll say DEPT dot index of finance. So when I say this index of finance, it, it provides the index position of a particular value which is provided. So let me run this code. You can see the index position of finance. So it is providing the index position that is 1. right? So this is 0 and this is 1. This provides the index position of the finance. This is how the index method works. Okay. Let me tell you about another function or another method called as pop. I'll say print dpt dot pop. Within pop, I can give the position which I want to, in which the value is there, in which I which position the value is there, and that value I just want to remove. For example, if I want to remove the value it, I need to give the position of it. This is 0, 1, and 2. So let me give two here and then try to print after popping it out. Let me run this code. You can see that I say print dept.pop of two, whatever value is popped that is getting returned here, that is getting printed. And then I say print dept after popping the value, it prints whatever is remaining. This is what the pop method helps you to do it. We have one more method called as remove that also removes the value, but in a different way. So let me say remove here instead of uh, 
position right in pop i'll be giving the position the index position but where in, in remove i'll be giving the value right and i cannot this doesn't return anything so i'm not using a print statement there right remove doesn't return any values so let me run this code again you can see right the value is remote now the difference between pop and remove is that pop i'll be giving the position wherein it returns the value which is popped out and remove i'll be giving the value which i want to remove from the list and doesn't return anything else okay that's the difference between remove and the pop okay now if i want to insert a department in between for example hr finance and i just want to insert a a new department in between for that i'll be using a method called as insert now usually like append will append only at the last but insert method takes a position and it inserts the value at that position for example 0 1 2 let me give 2 comma and let me give a new department that is training now here the department training will get inserted into the department list let me run this code you can see hr finance and training is getting inserted at the second position 0 0 index first index second index now training is getting inserted at the second index Right. This is how the insert method works. Fine. Okay. Now, if I want to um, sort this data in some ascending order, right? If I want to start the data in ascending order, I'll just say. Uh, let me let it be there. Then say sort, and let me run this code. print the EPT sort doesn't return anything I cannot put it inside the print statement right now it says you can see the data is getting in sorted in a ascending order right that is admin finance HR IT and training right now this sort method usually sorts in ascending order or the alphabetical order now if I want to put in a reverse alphabetical order right I'll say reverse assign true so I may need to give an argument pass an argument to the sort method to to sort the data in the reverse order right that is reverse order in the sense descending order or the reverse alphabetical order let me execute this code we will be getting training IT HR finance and admin now this is the use of sort method okay now we have one more method called as reverse i'll tell you what is that what's the difference between sorting and reversing right so let me pull this out i'll say dept dot reverse and then i'll say print dept now the exact position of the value the current position of the value will be printed the first line the second line the reverse value will be printed let us see how it works see this is the actual data which is given hr finance training and the reverse way exact reverse way doesn't take any uh, ascending or descending order but the reverse order of the data right admin it training and then it reverse the data and store it in the same list There is one more method called as count. It is the last method. There are totally 11 methods that are available in uh, list, right? So we are going to see the last method that is called as count. Now let me change the data so that I can give you more information easily. Let me say nums and I say 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 5, 6, 7. Now here you have mixed data, right? So let me say print NUMS and let me run this code. You're getting data as it is. Now, if I want to check a particular value, how many times it occurred, right? I'll say print NUMS dot count of, for example, two. Now, if I want to check how many times the value two occurred, let me run this code. It prints a value as it is. How many times two occurred? 
two times. Now, if I want to say how many times one occurred, let me run this code again. It says two times again. Right. So let me do this three times. Right. Let me run the code again. You're getting three. Apart from these 11 methods that we have seen so far, we have few other methods as well. Even though they are not associated with list object, we can do some process on list. Let us see what are those methods. Those methods are sorted, min, max, and sum. Now these methods are common methods that can take any object as argument like list or tuple. Now if I say I want to provide a list as an argument to this, I'll say sorted NUMS. Now this also sorts the value which is present inside the list, but unlike sort, it doesn't affect the num the original list. Now I have to give a new list to store the value. Let me say print new nums and also print the old existing nums list. Now let me execute this code so that you can see that new nums is a sorted one and the nums is as it is there without any change. Now let me take this out and if I want to find the sum of all the numbers in the list I'll just give print sum and pass the num to the list and it will return in the total sum value back to me and if I want to find the minimum value in the list I'll just say min of the list and if I want to find the maximum value I'll say max of the list that's it guys hope you understood this video and if you all you have any doubts please do comment in the comment section I'll reply back to you and if you like this video give me a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel thank you very much